Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Thursday, the 16th day of April. It's National Bean Counter Day, which That's you'd think right. should have been yesterday, but it's today. National Eggs Benedict Day, which is delicious, by the way. Our daughter loves Eggs Benedict. National Healthcare Decisions Day. National Orchid Day. Orchids are beautiful, aren't they? They are. Um, National Wear Your Pajamas to Work Day. Hasn't it kind of been been weeks? National Wear Your Pajamas to Work Month lately, (laughs) I think, for a lot of people. It's also Get to Know Your Customers Day and National High Five Day. But you know what? Let's not participate in the high fives this year. Let's do like the fist bump or what's that? Elbow bump? Is that what people are doing now? I I don't know what people are doing. Or or like an air high five like across the room. Never get to see anybody, so... Yeah, do do one of those, whatever that would be. Also, uh, it's a Thursday, so we have a Dear John letter, and we've got uh, a young couple who they're wondering, should they have a baby right now or not? They had done all the planning and preparing, and now they're concerned if this is a good time or not. You can chime in, if you'd like, on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Many people have dabbled in the stock market for their very first time ever this year. If you're new to the market, but you don't want to learn things the hard way and the expensive way, I encourage you to subscribe to this free newsletter. You can get the inside track with Wall Street's brightest minds delivered directly to your inbox every day at marketbeatminute.com. Subscribe for free. If you change your mind, just unsubscribe. Sign up for free right now at marketbeatminute.com. That's marketbeatminute.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. A survey shows more than half of women, 56% of women, feel that their pets are more affectionate than their partners. I'm looking at you, Heidi. What? Do you think our pets are more affectionate than your husband? Me? No, but I think you probably think the pets are more affectionate than I am. No, not at all. No? Dogs don't even like me. (laughs) I have to. I literally have to trick them into coming over to see me. Well, you want a treat? And I'm like, oh, dang it. And it kind of goes the same way with me, doesn't it? I know, it? pretty much. I have to trick you into things, too. Uh, 45% of women think their pets are cuter than their partners. Aw. Well, yes, because you are devastatingly handsome. Okay, well, thank you. How about ruggedly? <laughs> ruggedly. There you go. That's, and devastatingly And our handsome. dogs are adorable. <laughs> I've got a link to uh, this survey in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Some credit cards have really high rates or big annual fees. Usually, people sign up for these when it's all they qualify for. If that sounds like you, it may be time to get a better credit card. Over time, your situation changes, and you may qualify for a better credit card. Your current card hopes you don't think about it, but our site shows you many options to see if there's a better credit card for you. Check it out for free at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. This is your Brain on Drugs, brought to you by TimeForRehab.com. Now that I'm looking at this story, I kind of wonder if this is in the wrong place. Um, we'll read it anyway. We'll see if this has... I think I just saw the word drink in here, and I'll, I'll read the story. It says, <laughs> how many times have you spilled food or drink on your sofa? <laughs> I don't think this has anything to do with... It says, does 6,960 times <laughs> sound right? <laughs> According to a study, over the course of a 12-year life, a sofa will spill food and drinks on it, People will, 6,960 times. Yeah. That doesn't seem possible. The study says the average sofa couch will be slept on 612 times. We'll watch 5,340 films on that sofa. And uh, it says we will watch almost 75,000 hours of television. So, again, I'm not sure how that ended up here. (laughs) (laughs) I saw the word drink, and I'm pretty sure I grabbed the wrong story. So I feel as though I owe you a new story. That is great information, though. I'll do Very better tomorrow, I promise. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Jumanji's franchise has proven to be hugely successful. The newest right. versions. The first one didn't do as well. Last December's sequel, The Next Level, earned just shy of $800 million worldwide. Capers, capers. It's not quite as high as Welcome to the Jungle, nearly a billion-dollar gross uh, box office, but still impressive. Jumanji 4, it's the third in the new series, but the fourth, including the 95 film, seems like a no-brainer. Finally, officially confirmed last week that it is on the way. So for those of you wondering, yeah, it's coming. Um, CBS All Access streamed uh, a series called Picard, and it's a hit. 
Now there's word that there's going to be a Star Trek Picard movie as well. And The Bachelor, Listen to Your Heart, uh, The Bachelor Presents Listen to Your Heart, is a spinoff series that started, I think, earlier this week on ABC. 20 musicians from across the country will find the perfect partner in life and work through music-themed dates and challenges. Plain White Tees were on the first uh, premiere of the program. So, uh, yet another reality show I will not be watching. I just wanted to see Heidi's reaction. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. We're here to make it better. If you find that drug or alcohol problems are hitting you too close to home, you can get help. Maybe it's time for rehab. Your insurance may even cover everything. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. Get help for a drug or alcohol problem within 24 hours. We're here to make it better. Get more information at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now your scoop of the day, and it comes your way, courtesy of insurancechicken.com. Arizona 23-year-old California man is under arrest in Arizona. He said... Uh, they said he deliberately coughed on a gas pump handle as a joke. Uh, this happened in Yuma. The unnamed suspect posted a video of his stunt on social media. Multiple people brought it to the attention of the police, and he was arrested. So quit doing that. I don't know why people think, oh, i got something that's going to be really funny. I'm going to freak people out. Don't do that. I mean, now is a good time for you to just stay home. Maybe read a book. I don't know. Something else. But quit doing those things. Right. A study found that eating five fruits and veggies a day may not cut your risk of getting cancer. So apparently in the past you're going, eat your fruits and veggies and that's going to help. And now they're like, oh, maybe not. Huh. You never know. You never know what's good and what's not. I knew it was best for you, but I didn't know that it would cut your risk of cancer. A 30-something New Yorker seems uh, seeking a germ-free girlfriend during the pandemic <laughs> has hung dating flyers along the running paths. The man, who prefers only to be identified as Brad, a.k.a. SteadyManForYou at (laughs) gmail.com. Wow! We're giving out his email address? That is the number for the letter U. Anyway, uh, they say in the flyer that he's, quote, seeking girlfriend for coronavirus and beyond and describes himself as healthy, attractive, well-employed man looking for a germ-free monogamy. Germ-free. So that's a whole different dating style right, right? there. Isn't that weird? How'd you meet your girlfriend? I put up a bunch of flyers on a running trail. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's going to well, be I mean, lifelong you love. You would be finding someone with similar interests You'd if think, that's where you're putting know. it. But. I've got a link to that story. It's in the show notes if you're looking for a man that likes to, you know, find women on running trails. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the beginning of a movie. <laughs> It really does. The lockdown in Moscow, Russia, is very strict. In fact, uh, one of the only ways that you can leave your home in Moscow is if you're going to walk your dog, which is why some people are renting their dogs to their neighbors so they can get out of the house. The rent is usually just like a few bucks for a half hour, but they're saying, hey, if you want to leave the house, take my dog for a walk. You know how much our dogs would love that? <laughs> I know. We they, never take them they, for walks. We, they love to go for a W-A-L-K. we got to quit saying that word. <laughs> um, to, what is the tip? Uh, I'm sorry. What is the proper amount to tip during this coronavirus economy? They say if you can afford it, you're supposed to double your normal tip for delivery drivers because they're putting themselves in harm's way and they're not being paid as well as medical professionals and some other people. Sure. And I know there's a lot of medical professionals that aren't as paid as well as other medical professionals. So anyway, Paul Bagden, a professor at Johnson and Wales University, Rhode Island, said, go with your heart. It's good karma. It's good for mankind. But they're just saying, hey, you know what? Now more than ever... A nice tip would be a good thing. Right. And finally, this is weird, Chinese novelist has become an internet star after she slammed the China government for misleading the public on the coronavirus. The woman is known as Fang Fang, and she's kept a diary of what it's like to be on lockdown in the city of Wuhan. Mm, so, interesting. It'll be interesting to see where all of that goes. Hopefully she's still with uh-huh, us a week exactly. from now. Exactly. I, 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 this story is already probably four or five days old, so hopefully she's still with us now. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Do you pay too much for insurance? Have you looked around? Or are you too chicken? Don't be afraid to look around to see if you can find a better deal at insurancechicken.com. We make it super simple for you to see rates from several different companies, to see what they have to offer, all in one place. Heck out great insurance deals at insurancechicken.com. Is it time for you to cross the road? See if we can save you money each month at insurancechicken.com. That's insurancechicken.com. And it's time right now for Dear John Letters. Dear John, Dear John, Dear John, 
Dear John, this is a letter from two of us. My husband and I have been married two years. We've been saving and paying off debt and planning for a family. We were on track to make that special step in 2020. We are completely debt-free other than our home, which we bought specifically so we can have a family. Now that we're here and excited to begin a family, we have many people in our lives telling us not to do this right now. I don't want to wait. We've been sacrificing so many things to get to where we are. We don't want to let this stupid virus stop us from starting a family and being happy. We're both healthy. We both work from home. We've complied with every rule and have even gone above and beyond because that's who we are. Do you think it's wrong for us to start a family now? Signed, Preparing for Parenthood. I'm going to I'm not even going to ask Heidi yet. I'm going to just say no. I don't think it's wrong for you to do that. So now I'm going to ask Heidi and then we'll we'll expand both of our answers, but do you think now is a wrong time for someone who's prepared to have a family? I don't family? think you should let anybody tell you what you can exactly. and cannot do and when. If You're, it feels right to you, it's right. I will say you need to think about the fact that if you are pregnant and you end up getting this virus, you you could hinder what types of treatment you're allowed to get so, because it might harm the baby. Sounds to me like this is a couple who has gone above and beyond and they're doing everything right. And Again, we don't know because we're just reading a, a simple little message that came to us. But from the sounds of it, pretty darn prepared for everything that's come their way. And understand the whole sacrificing. They've sacrificed a lot to get to where they are, debt-free other than their house. And I don't know how old they are, but if it's a young couple that's been married a few years, sounds like a pretty young couple. So to be in that position where you're completely debt-free other than your house, and you've been saving, and you've been you know sacrificing, and now you're finally there, and it's finally time to do this, could you say, well, we're going to change plans? You know what? If you decide to have a family, and you have some kiddos, and you've got two or three kids, five years from now, look back and go, should we have not done this? I guarantee you the answer would be, no, you shouldn't have not done this. You absolutely should have done this. And you never know. That kid that you have could be a person who cures cancer. You know, So you have no idea who that, if, if you're making a decision saying, oh, because of what's going on right now, again, control the things you can control. In your world, it sounds like you got things kind of under control. Think about how many listening would love to be in that situation. To yeah, be. financially, but there are some things you have no control over. And I understand that. The and things all I'm going all I'm going to say is don't let anybody else tell you what to do. This is a decision between you and your spouse and that's it. It doesn't matter what John and I think. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. This but is a decision you need to make the specific, for yourself and what feels right to you. The specific question is, and folks, you can chime in with your advice, and I would absolutely encourage you to do that. If you have an opinion on this, don't just yell it at the radio or the computer. If you'd like, you can go to our Facebook page and chime in with your advice. And again, the question is this. Do you think it's wrong for us to start a family now? And I, I think the answer is no. No, it's not I wrong. don't think it's wrong for you to start a family now. Think about how many people are starting a family right now. I, I bet there's a lot because there are people who have a lot of time on their hands and they're home mm-hmm. and they're together way more than... And a lot of those people that are going to be doing that, and I'm not trying to shame anybody, but I'm telling you, many people who are starting a family right now are not anywhere near the condition you guys are, the position you're in. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to be just fine. And I believe that all of this stuff is going to be done someday. And we're going to look back and go, wow, 2020 was bizarre, wasn't it? But you don't want to look back and say, well, we waited to start a family. Because if you keep waiting, if you go, well, we're going to wait till this is done. And then the next thing that comes along is now we have this debt that we have to worry about. So let's wait till that's paid off. What was the movie? Uh, Idiocracy. Remember that movie? Yeah. So there was a movie where there was a couple that was waiting to have kids until the time was right. And then there was another couple that, you know, had kids. Right. And the couple that was just having kids left and right, they, you know, they populated the planet. And then the couple that was waiting to have kids, by no means is this a documentary, (laughs) but they kept waiting and they didn't have any kids. Right. Because the time will never be right. If you want to wait until perfect conditions, well, we live in an imperfect world. So it's not going to happen. Uh, Again, you can chime in with your advice. Prepping for Parenthood, thank you very much for that letter. Uh, Again, if you'd like to chime in, you can do so at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. 
Right now, even a little vacation would be nice. But this one is going to be great. This October, we're going to Cancun for a fun event called The Sands. Hear awesome music from Billy Idol, Belinda Carlisle, Cheap Trick, and so many more. This happens at the end of October. And when everything blows over, we're going to need a vacation. I hope you will join us. We've been to this same event for the last three years, and it's so much fun. I wouldn't miss it. Get all the information and get your spot reserved to join us at radiotravelgroup.com. That's radiotravelgroup.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The majority of Americans choose dogs over love. It says dogs have been known for the longest time to be man's best friend, but Americans are increasingly taking that to a new level. A new study, well, 2017 study from Rover, a uh, three-year study found 54% of dog owners are willing to end a relationship if their pup doesn't like their partner. The study found 98% of dog owners consider their dog to be part of the family. I agree with that. Absolutely. 78% include their pups in major family moments. And since one in four people said they bring their cuddly companions on first dates, maybe consider bringing dog treats instead of flowers next time. So there you go. Yeah, I think that is very bad advice. Don't, don't bring dog treats. You bring dog <laughs> treats to a date. So what were you expecting? Instead of flowers. <laughs> well, maybe you were going to be a, you know. A rough date. I don't know. <laughs> just bring both. That's just a solid There you plan. go. Yeah, if you- <laughs> <laughs> Today's fun fact. Some credit cards have really high rates or big annual fees. Usually, people sign up for these when it's all they qualify for. If that sounds like you, it may be time to get a better credit card. Over time, your situation changes, and you may qualify for a better credit card. Your current card hopes you don't think about it, but our site shows you many options to see if there's a better credit card for you. Check it out for free at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, a news headline from somewhere in this world. Uh, Maldive or Maldive? I don't know how you say it. I, Someplace I we've never know. been. Oh, we've never we been there. Clearly need to get out more. Uh, Dateline. <laughs> a South African couple is trapped on their honeymoon at a resort in the Maldive Islands or Maldive Islands after their country shut down all incoming flights. Here's the thing. We were just talking about this with a friend of ours. Yeah. They just how got back from work? their honeymoon. How does that work financially? I mean, and, if yeah. they're stranded at that resort Do and they you, most people pay? can't afford to pay full-blown resort rates to stay there unlimited i'm gonna have to put somebody on in charge of that if you happen to know the answer as a listener if you could do me a favor let us know. You can do it through our website, johnandheidyshow.com. Yeah. You can do it through our Facebook page, but just chime in and let me know, hey, if you're stranded on a vacation... Right. How do, does that work? Do I still need to keep paying for that vacation? If that's the case, I'm going on vacation if it's not. <laughs> I'm like, it's free. All I have to do is get there. Uh, no, I, I don't know that I would still do that. But interesting story. That is a news headline from somewhere in this world. We're here to make it better. If you find that drug or alcohol problems are hitting you too close to home, you can get help. Maybe it's time for rehab. Your insurance may even cover everything. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. Get help for a drug or alcohol problem within 24 hours. We're here to make it better. Get more information at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Officials all over can't stop emphasizing the importance of practicing social distancing to slow down the spread of COVID-19. Now, leaders in Florida are giving people an interesting visual on how to maintain the proper distance. This is a quote. This is a reminder that during the COVID-19, please remember to keep at least one large alligator between you and everyone else at all times. (laughs) Wait a minute. What? They're saying six feet. That would be a large alligator. Okay. That's just an interesting way to put it, I think. So they posted that on their Facebook page. 11,000 cases and 170 deaths in that area. So that's why they're saying, hey, it's important to slow the spread. Officials are enforcing stay-at-home orders in a lot of places. Uh, and other other ways to visualize that six feet, they say, imagine two golden retrievers, the width of a sedan, a sofa, a dining room table, or the length of a mattress. It's six feet. How hard is it for people to understand that? But they're saying, it's kind of scary when they say, keep an, a, a large alligator between you and a loved one. I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. But they're just saying that distance. So there you go. I just thought it was kind of funny. That's why it's today's Weird News. John and Heidi. 
Now your moment of duh, brought to you by insurancechicken.com, and it comes from one of Heidi's favorite places in the world, Dollar Tree. <laughs> she loves going I there. do love Dollar I, Tree. I've spent a lot of time sitting in the parking lot at Dollar Tree <laughs> waiting for her. But a cashier was talking to a man who cut in line, and she was saying, hey, can you please respect the current social distancing rules? And then he punched her. Woo! Yeah, police say 55-year-old Stefan Finelli was at the discount store, when he got into an argument with Natasha Kajani, an arrest affidavit says the dispute was prompted when he skipped the line at the cashier. Uh, and when he got up there, he placed his items in front of another customer. That's when she said, hey, can you go back to the back of the line? He get, became irate. She said um, she also requested the defendant to respect the current social distancing rules in which he was not practicing. That is when he moved to the front of the line and began striking the victim. Wow. He's locked dude. up right now in lieu of a $2,500 bond. Bad idea, dude. Yeah. What Did you think that was going to get you through the line quicker? Don't I mean, disrespect the tree, man. Yeah. Le- <laughs> or anyone else. <laughs> Just saying. That's today's Moment of Duh. Do you pay too much for insurance? Have you looked around? Or are you too chicken? Don't be afraid to look around to see if you can find a better deal at insurancechicken.com. We make it super simple for you to see rates from several different companies, to see what they have to offer, all in one place. Heck out great insurance deals at insurancechicken.com. Is it time for you to cross the road? See if we can save you money each month at insurancechicken.com. That's insurancechicken.com. Time now for fake news or Florida. At this point in the program, I read a story that may be true. It may not be. You have to guess. Heidi gets to guess. You get to guess at home. Is it a true story from the great state of Florida or is it hashtag fake news made up to trick you and amuse me? Here we go. Fake news or Florida? Clearwater, Florida man busted for trying to buy lotto tickets using fake movie money. Fake news or Florida? I'm going to say fake news. And you would be incorrect. Ah. Oh. They really did do this. You can buy this stuff online, and it says printed right on it right, for motion picture use right. only. And they use it in movies because it looks like real money. And it looks a lot like real money, but it's fake money. Right. So he went in thinking, oh, hey, even though it says for motion picture use only, I'm going to just hand him a $100 bill and get t- lottery tickets. No, it doesn't work. Instead, he got himself arrested. So bad plan. That is fake news or Florida. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news. I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of hashtag gift card challenge. This is sweeping the nation, by the way. I think it's really cool to see how many people are doing this. All of the details can be found at giftcardchallenge.org. And a thank you to everybody who is taking part in that. Here's our good news for today. I think this is just adorable. Um, a lot of people are kind of cooped up right now. We read a story about a man who ran a marathon in his backyard. Remember that? Yeah. And we still, I don't know if that was on a treadmill or if he ran laps. Yeah, I don't know. But here's the headline. 99-year-old veteran is walking laps around his garden to raise money for NHS. That's the UK's National Health Service. Yeah. So he's a World War II veteran. He's walking 100 laps around the garden during this pandemic to raise money for the health service. And there's a photo of him. He's got a little scooter. And he's got his cane attached to the scooter. And in this photo, he's actually wearing uh, some of his medals from the war. And this one down here, he's not wearing that. But Captain Tom Moore, Bedfordshire, England, aiming to walk 100 laps around his back garden before he turns 100, April 30th. So he's 99 right now. He wants to walk 100 laps before he turns 100. Walking at a rate of 10 laps a day, he says slow and steady as he traverses his garden. So far, he's he's done 70 laps. He's got 30 to go between now and the 30th of April. He says he wanted to do a fundraiser to, to thank the NHS staff after his recent treatment for a broken hip and cancer. But his actions during the COVID lockdown has attracted generous donations from people all around the world. So at the printing of this story, 
Uh, Tuesday morning of this week is when this was uh, printed. Captain Moore's campaign had raised over $2.2 million. Wow. 1.8 million pounds at that time. And that's before it became a big news story. So I'll bet it's even more now. Um, I don't know where I click here to find out. But I've got a link to it all in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday.